Let's define um, the basic building blocks of matter as we start. I'm sure you remember from the eighth grade definition of the atom as the basic unit of matter. That if you take matter and divide it down to you get the smallest unit. And the smallest unit maintains all of the properties of that original hunk of matter, then that is an element. And elements, again, are made of atoms, those basic building blocks. We then want to define three other terms, matter, mass, and volume. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. So once you know that, as long as you know what mass is, and again, mass is the amount or quantity of matter that is present, the sum of all of the atoms, and volume, which is the space that that matter takes up. So mass and volume okay, create matter. When you're looking at the formalized definition, again, matter, anything that has mass and volume, mass, the amount of matter, volume, the space that matter takes up. Again, these are fairly simple eighth grade definitions, and they still apply. As we start to classify matter, we're first going to start with pure substances, or just substances. If you say substance, it's understood that it is pure. And the basic definition of pure substance, it's composed of one type of matter. This is gold. And again, gold has a chemical formula. And those are two things that you want to make sure you understand before you classify. You've got to have one type of substance, and you have to be able to write a chemical formula for it. So as we're getting into our pure substances, a substance is a pure form of matter, which is why we sometimes call it a pure substance. It consists of either an element or a compound, and it has a chemical formula. So if you can write a chemical formula that describes that matter, it is a substance. So air is composed of nitrogen and oxygen and some other gases, but these are the two main components. Each of these components is indeed a pure substance, but air itself is not because it is not composed of one type of matter. Some other substances that you might see in your daily life you might think were pure. Aluminum foil says aluminum foil, and aluminum has a formula, but aluminum foil is not a pure substance. If you look at a pure substance, it looks uniform throughout. And aluminum foil has a shiny side, and it's got another side. It's got a little darkness to it. And that is because carbon has been alloyed with the aluminum. So it contains carbon and aluminum. That's not a pure substance. This copper wire is a pure substance. It contains nothing but copper atoms, all the atoms being the same. This is table salt, chemical formula, NaCl for sodium chloride. And if it just contained the NaCl, then it would indeed be a pure substance. But table salt often contains the element iodine, uh, which gives us our dietary source of iodine. So this would not be a pure substance either. Again, your pure substances uh, are elements or compounds. Now let's decide what's the difference between an element and a compound. An element is a pure substance made of only one type of atom, not one atom. We can see here we've got H2, O2, and S8, but all of the atoms are S in this, all are O, and all are H. One type of atom. That makes up an element. Compounds are substances made from the chemical bonding of two or more different, and that's the key. H2O contains hydrogen and oxygen. That's two different elements. Okay? MgO, two different elements. H2, even though there are two atoms of H, that is not a compound. 
Again, compounds can only be broken down by chemical methods, cannot use physical methods, and the compound has completely different properties from the elements that make it up. So sodium chloride is made from sodium metal, which is a highly reactive metal, and chlorine gas, which is a toxic gas. When they combine to form sodium chloride, the compound sodium chloride has a cubic structure crystal, and again, it's that white solid that you sprinkle on your food. None of the properties are the elements that make it up. Here's a picture of a structure of a compound, vitamin C, ascorbic acid. And again, you can see that this has to be a compound because it's got three different types of atoms, and they are indeed bonded to each other. Okay? And this would be your typical compound. The vocabulary can be a little confusing. These two words in particular, molecule and compound, are sometimes used interchangeably, and they're not really the same thing. A molecule is just two or more atoms chemically bonded. So chlorine, Cl2, would be a molecule. It's got two atoms bonded together. That's the definition of molecule. To be a compound, you have to have two or more different kinds of atoms bonded together. So again, this is water with your H2O. There are your H's and your O's. So again, a compound is a molecule. There's no doubt about it. A compound has uh, two or more different atoms, and a molecule has two or more atoms. The difference is that a molecule, the atoms can be the same and be bonded. Once you're into classifying matter, once you're finished with your pure substances, and again, the only two pure substances that you have to worry about are elements and compounds. Those are your pure substances. Now let's talk about mixtures. Mixtures, again, are made up of two or more substances physically combined. Physically combined means each part keeps its own individual properties. So if you put sodium chloride with water, you make salt water. But the salt and the water keep their separate individual properties. Examples of mixture like air, wood, tea, chocolate, again, these substances do not have chemical formulas. You cannot write a chemical formula for air. You can write chemical formulas for some of the components of air. And again, putting a plus there indicates they're reacting. They're not reacting. They're just hanging around together in air. These are pure substances. Together, floating around as air, they are a mixture. Again, a mixture is many different pure substances, usually compounds, could be elements, that are physically combined. In this orange, you could remove the water, the fructose, and the citric acid from each other using physical means. Okay. Again, you can see by looking at this orange, there are many different parts that have different properties. The seed versus the pulp versus the peel and so on. Most things around us are mixtures. Once you decide that something is a mixture, then you only have two types of classifications. It is either heterogeneous mixture, meaning that it is non-uniform. So when you look at it, you see different parts. Chocolate chip cookie, you can see the chocolate chips. Back here with the orange, you can certainly see this is heterogeneous. If you take a sample from any part, it will be different from another part. So you are either heterogeneous in nature all, you are uniform throughout, and you are homogeneous, meaning that you would still, and a good example would be our salt water, sodium chloride and water. If you have a beaker of sodium chloride and water or salt water, it looks uniform. All the parts look the same as long as the salt hasn't settled out. So again, it's still a mixture, but it's a solution or a homogeneous mixture. So that's pretty much it for the classification of matter. If you have matter, and again, that's something that has mass and volume, okay, if you look at the matter and you decide whether it can be separated by physical means, if it can, then it's some type of mixture. 
That's as simple as it gets. If you cannot separate it by physical means, if it's going to take chemical means, then it is a pure substance. So if you decide that it's a mixture, you can physically separate it, then you look to see if the mixture is in uniform composition. If it is uniform in composition, then it's a homogeneous mixture, which we call a solution. If it is not uniform, then it's simply a heterogeneous mixture. And we tend to just call those mixtures. So solution for homogeneous, mixture for heterogeneous. If it is a pure substance, you decide if it can be decomposed further by chemical means. If you cannot decompose it, let's go over here, if you cannot decompose it anymore by physical, excuse me, by chemical means, then it must contain the same atoms and it is an element, all the atoms the same. If you can decompose it by chemical means, then it contains different atoms and it is a compound. Again, quick review with vocabulary. If you're looking here, you can tell that this is one type of matter. All of these are the same. There's only one of them. They're not bonded together, so that's atoms. And since they're all the same, it's an element. This is certainly an element, but since there are more than one bonded, this is a molecule, but it's a molecule of an element. So these are both elements, one type of matter. This is a molecule of an element. That's an atom of an element. Looking here, we can see that, okay, this definitely is a molecule. Okay, you've got at least two things stuck together. And of the things that are bonded together, there's at least one that's different from the other. So this has to be a compound. And again, it's a molecule of a compound. Here we can see we have a mixture. We have several different types of matter. We've got one, two, three different types of matter. These would be elements, and that would be a compound. It would be a heterogeneous mixture. So let's look at our next picture and see if you can tell me. Again, this is representing the bond. These are exactly the same, whatever they happen to be. So what would this be? That's right, that's an element. And it's a molecule of an element. Here, you've got two different types of atoms bonded together. Again, you have four total atoms, but only two different types. So that has to be a compound. Again, this happens to be sulfur. And there happen to be eight of them. You can't see all eight of them. There are four here and four in the plane behind it. If all of them are the same, that is an element. Again, it's still a molecule of an element, but it's an element. And this clearly fits the definition of compound, two or more different atoms bonded together. When you're looking at real uh, objects around you, it's probably a little more difficult if you don't know what they're composed of. Let's go through the thinking process. We know this is ice. We know ice is just a different physical form of water. Can we write a chemical formula for water? We can. So water is a pure substance. Looking at its formula, it has to be a compound. Here, looking at the apple, well, we know that it's not uniform throughout, first of all, so it has to be some kind of mixture. Since it's not uniform, it has to be a heterogeneous mixture or just a mixture.